we don't know whether this is a good idea or not. It's the not. best idea we've ever had. <laughs> Let's get straight to our first caller, and it's Tracy. Hello, Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Hi. Hi there. What would you like to uh, to ask Miriam? Um, I'd like to know, does she get embarrassed by anyone or anything? Like, she loves to embarrass other people. Mm, so, do you feel embarrassment? I definitely feel embarrassment, mostly at myself. Oh. I think, you know, when I've said something rude, or like just now when I farted, <laughs> I'm, for, momentarily I'm embarrassed. Uh, but I get over it, and so, so does everybody else. And also, when you're embarrassed, you're at your most open and charming, I think. Mm. So it's not a bad thing to be embarrassed. So sort of go with that emotion rather yes. than trying to fight it. Don't fight it. There we are. Absolutely. Thank you. Good advice. I like that. Thank you, Thanks, Tracy. Tracy. Uh, we've got Sarah on the line now. Hi, Sarah. Hi, yes. Hi. Well, firstly, congratulations to you because you gave birth to your first baby two months ago. So well done, you. But what's the problem? It's just that people like to give a lot of unsolicited advice, I would say. Um, and you kind of have to nod and you smile and you say thank you, but it's there is quite a lot of it. Mm. Um, so I was kind of wondering if Miriam had any advice on how it kind of tell people to shut up without maybe insulting them. Right. I so sympathise with that. Um, not that I've ever had a baby, but it's very irritating, isn't it, when people try and mm -hmm. tell you... I would just say, do you mind? I'm the mother and I want to learn for myself. I, I, would, I would just stop them straight away. I know you mean well, you say, but I need to know for myself. I need to find it out for myself. And if you say it smilingly, they won't be offended. And if they are, well, poo to them. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done. So it's still about being a little bit charming with it, but then getting your point across. I think so, because yeah. you, you, you don't want to insult people. There's no, there's no pleasure in making people feel miserable. But just explain, if you explain yourself in a nice way and say, let me learn... Mm. Don't tell me, let me learn for myself. Then they'll understand. And hmm. it does... If there's any consolation whatsoever, I think there'll be mums up and down the country will be saying, that oh, happened to me, that happened to me. It just seems to happen to everybody, that mm. anyone who has a baby, everyone piles in and gives advice. And they think it, they're like, being yeah. nice by doing it. What's actually quite good is that you recognise that and you're not, and you're going, actually, I want to learn for myself. You're not kind of just going down, going, oh, I'm useless, I don't know any of this stuff. So it's good that you're kind of sticking to your guns and yeah. trusting in yourself. There you go, Sarah. Well done, you. Um, you. Where should we go next? Uh, let's go to Louise. Okay. Um, so, so Louise, you've just read Miriam's latest book for the second time. Ah. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and 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 in it, uh, she talks about making positives out of negatives, which you love. Um, but you find that a struggle in your in your own life. Have you? Would you say you had a thick skin? Oh no, I, I don't. I have a thin skin. It is uh, definitely somewhat thinner than I would like. So I would like to ask Miriam, you know, your voice actually reads to me in this book. It's so good and I've enjoyed it so much. And I just wonder, you know, you seem to be confident and happy and have a thick skin. Do you really? And how do I make mine somewhat thicker? I think it's important not to have a thick skin, actually. I think being thin-skinned is a good thing. I couldn't be an actress if I were thick-skinned, if nothing got through to me, if I was invulnerable. To be vulnerable is a wonderful quality. Guard it. Ah. Guard it. Make I, I it, make it your it. own. I do treasure it, and I'm very positive. Um, you know, but I, I just sometimes would like not to feel things quite so much. Mm. Do you get... So when you say you've got a thick... Thick skin. I mean, do, do, can you? Do people offend you if they say something? I have a thin hurt? skin. I have a thin skin. I'm very, uh, very. Um, I take umbrage very easily. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. So you can You do get hurt. Of you course. Do get it's very important to to not to to cut people out mm. because a, a skin, a thick skin, is a barrier between you and other people, and you don't want a barrier. Just know mm -hmm. who you are. Know that you're a wonderful person. Know that for yourself, and yeah. then you you won't be hurt by the odd chance remark because people shouldn't want to hurt you, and the way through that is to say, D 
did you know that you hurt me when you said that? And if yeah. they know, they won't do it again. And if they do do it again, cut them out. Cut them out of your life. <laughs> you're, you're quite amazing, Miriam. Amazing. I am. I am. Yes, <laughs> because I'm amazing. telling you the truth, darling. <laughs> That's the truth. And I know. And I knew I would speak to you. When I read your book, I just didn't realise it would be quite so soon. Well, there you are. That's so lovely. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Yeah, well done, Thank Louise. You. Miriam, you are Thanks. very good Thanks. at this, actually. I have to say, uh, Penny, let's see if you can help her. She's got in touch. She says, every Sunday, my husband doesn't move from his chair in front of the TV. He sits there with his beer and cigarettes and will fall asleep without helping me do anything. I've thrown things at him, shouted at him, nothing works. How can I get him to move his lazy backside? Leave him. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't waste two seconds on a man like that. <laughs> Good God. Anybody like that. No, just chuck him out, love. And is there, is there a middle ground of sort of talking it through, maybe? Or do you not think, think it's too late for that? If he doesn't listen, if he doesn't care... No, I don't think there is a middle ground. No. Because he's not seeing you as a human being. He's obviously long lost the, the art of being a human being. So I, I would just say, look, if, if, if you don't uh, ship up... No, ship... What's the word? If you don't shape up... Shape up. up. Shape if up. you don't shape, shape up, either you or I are shipping out. I would be firm. There firm. you go. OK. There you go. Good. Um, like it. Brad says, should I tell my supervisor at work that I have a crush on oh, her? Brad. We've worked together for nearly four years and she recently got a promotion, so we no longer work alongside each other. Should I tell her how I feel? I've had a crush for a few months now, but I didn't want to make things awkward at work, so I've not said anything. Oh, what do you do? That's very tricky. Uh, are you a, a man or a woman? I mean, is Brad, it, is... Brad is... Brad, I, I, I believe, identifies as male. He's male and she's a woman. She's and a woman, she's yeah. Well, then I wouldn't say anything. Really? No, because it's um, but it, could, it could be it, harassment. But you could what? Well, couldn't he may miss out on the love of his life and they? Could no, be... I wouldn't say anything. Really? No, I would. I would just keep stum, as we say. What about if they met socially outside of work, and then it, could you, you? You could do that. You could say, um, "Would you like to come for a drink?" Uh, one night or something. Mm. With like a group, that. first of all? Or is it straight, could you... Uh, you could say, just with me. Would you like to come out for a drink with me? And if she says no, then leave it alone and forget it. Yes. Yes, right. All OK, right, fair enough. Um, Lucy says, I've been struggling with loneliness recently and I would love to find love. I want to get back out there, but I just don't know how. Do you have any advice for Lucy? Yes, it's, there's lots of people like that. Mm. Now, I'm of the age when we didn't have the internet. So a lot of people go on the internet and find... Yeah. Um, a lot of people I know have done that. I would say uh, have a hobby and join a group. If you like photography, join a photography group. Or if you like walking or collecting stamps or doing genealogy. And find somebody who likes something that you like. And then, you, then it's not just looking for, desperately looking for a partner. You are actually engaged in an activity. Do you think that's better than online? Do you think people need to tread a bit carefully with online dating? I don't, I don't know much about online. Mm -hmm. I, 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 it's not for me. But it's what an awful lot of people I know are doing it, mm -hmm. and, and very happily. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe online is the answer. You know, get a nice photograph and say you like photography or... Or, you know, don't do anything sexual straight away. I think you should wait for sex. I don't think it should come immediately. It should, it should be arrived at mm -hmm. eventually. Not like you, Philip, but, um, <laughs> you know, that sort of wait for it. <laughs> I don't know what I know. What, what do you know that I don't know? <laughs> what do you know that I don't know? <laughs> I don't know very much. I'm just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to process that, but thank you very much indeed. Miriam, oh, thank you. You're looking away. <laughs> <laughs> We're in touch uh, anywhere because we're yeah. going to be talking to you in a bit as well Thank about you your very brilliant much. new show. That was very good. I loved that. That was, that was good, good fun. Very good. And also, good, very good sensible, advice. good advice, actually. Yeah.